Victoria, tell me about you and the void. Oh, me and the void. Oh, where to start? I feel like I have uh, an interesting relationship with the void because some of the language that I've been working with in the esoteric teachings and the teachers that I work with has been a little different to the void in a way. So like I have a relationship to sort of like the personality, the soul and the void in those ways. And I do a lot of like creation from that. But I think when people talk about the void, they talk about it as a very expansive place. Whereas for me, it feels like quite a, um, like a, it's like a gravity to it, you know? Like I feel like that's the experience I speak to in my body the most. And whenever I'm talking to my partner about like what we experience in meditation, I always find that mine is more of like that weighty, like I feel like it's like black honey kind of energy that I feel like in my experience of uh, like my body and the void in that way. Mm, like wormy or it feels like very like warm or something and gooey. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. and how often do you meditate and what's your relationship with meditation? Um, I mean, sort of if we're defining meditation, <laughs> like I don't know if I sit and do like a a meditation that's so like, typically looks like meditation every day but I'm I do like sit and be and connect and move my body and um yeah like I connect into it quite a lot and I feel like that is like the place that I move from and a lot of the place I make decisions from and I often talk about like the back body so I feel like there's a place of like you know like the dark body is sort of like where I make my most of my uh felt sense decisions made are made from that place if that makes sense Mm, yeah and you've said body so many times and (laughs) and it just and and I love that and my question is your relationship with your body and your relationship to sex and sexuality you've been you're seen as an expert in sacred Mm. sexuality and and you had a business called the paradigm of new intimacy yeah. And um, and I know you've been such an advocate for different voices and and looking at sexuality differently and and quite an innovative mind and an innovative approach. And the first time I I saw you actually, I think I I'm the first time I heard of Victoria Redbard was when you spoke at Conscious Leaders in Brisbane, and I I feel like it was the, at the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020, and I went to one of the conscious leaders events in Brisbane and you were speaking and yeah, I I was in a time where my partner Ted had had a big accident and I was in, we were in a carer's role and, and we were just, our intimacy was just different at that time because of the nature of the situation we were in and his healing. And, and I went to that night and you were such a permission slip for me. And I, I'm sure that people say this to you all the time and it's so cool that you're a stand for this, but I remember, I think you said you were just sharing about self-pleasure and, and being with your body and understanding your body and, and something it popped in my head when I think you said you had self-pleasured and you'd, you'd orgasmed a few times that day or, or uh, recently. And I was like, because I've been in, in a relationship for so long, I hadn't really explored myself. Mm. And there was this opening when Ted was going through this healing for, uh, we weren't intimate in that way so often. And it was just like, you just, you just gave me this little permission. So you were like, oh, I didn't even think that that was possible. I didn't, I wasn't exploring myself. And so you gave me this permission slip and, and that for months opened me up to myself in a way that I'd, I'd never explored. And I was 30 at the time, which was so cool. Amazing. And yeah, so I'm so grateful. So thank you. And that's the permission slip that you bring, but can you tell us a bit about your journey with your body and why you're so obsessed and fascinated with the body and with sexuality like where did that come from for you yeah it's cool I'm actually writing a bit of a memoir about this at the moment so it's quite an interesting question because I've been tracking like when did this even happen why where does this obsession come from um and I think it is like you know it's multiple things like I feel like in a way like some of this stuff came for me like I feel that I didn't seek it out and I definitely wasn't brought up in a family that was very open or like you know uh my childhood and like growing up in England was just not like that at all and I think just going I started backpacking when I was like 19 across the world and 
meeting the others almost you know like I'd have this feeling of just like oh this is like the like it was like this bursting forward for life that I was really deeply seeking and I feel like that is actually what what was there more than even sexuality it was like I was horny and I was hungry for life you know (laughs) and I just wanted more of that experience and then just meeting the others it was like when I when I meet somebody in the or when I used to meet people in like that deep place of connection and authenticity it was like oh this is like you know, sexuality is just another language that I can meet people on. It's just another place of where we can find that point of connection and authenticity. And so I, then I started following this kind of thread of Eros and I realized that Eros kind of was underneath the sexuality. And so then it became less around like having sex with people or like having a sexual contact with people and just being like, what happens if that that Eros, that pulse of life that lives underneath can actually come forward? And it was like, sometimes I feel like sexuality it looks like sex but it's actually not that so I was like getting more curious of like okay I'm feeling my desire towards you I'd like I just open up these conversations with people and just start um like digging into being like okay so what do you think that is and then like just seeing all the places it could go because it would open up to like you know past life experiences or the transpersonal or like this almost code exchange of like polarities that were starting to open up and that is when it got super interesting for me so I guess it was like I had a lot of feeling in my body um and sexual desire and and like life that just wanted to be ravished I suppose and then moving out into the world and recognizing like the range that that could have really opened something for me oh and I know that now you're engaged and you're oh how because I I've watched you over the years talk about different types of relationships like being with multiple people and just what love can look like in all these different capacities and now you're in a relationship where you're getting married can you share about your process with with navigating that like being with multiple people and and maybe not putting a label to it or putting a label to it like where where are you at now with that concept (laughs) for sure um so uh, you know there's this there's sort of like this thing that we see in society where it goes either we're monogamous or we're polyamorous and I feel like my process in opening up my scope of uh you know like relating styles has just taken me sort of out of those boxes it's like like the life and the way that I was journeying with life got bigger than the labels and even the way that I approach sexuality it's like you know like I was listening to some strange podcast the other day Uh, a friend of mine was showing me it was like talking about all the point systems you know and all like you know women just want to be with men that are like six foot tall and rich and you know and billionaires and there's like such a small percentage of those and then like the like women's worth is all based in you know not having cellulite having blonde hair having big boobs having you know the right waist to whatever butt ratio (laughs) all these madness it's like just all of this reality is like uh, is is like one place in reality and I feel like I, I feel really sad that sometimes that we I almost just think that that's the only place that sexuality lives and like this point system and as I explored this conversation of eros it kind of took me deeper into like what is what is love what is sexuality beyond transactional data basically and that had led me into sort of seeing like almost being able to clock a deeper truth. So my own personal relationship now, um, I don't feel like it's been that impacted by marriage. I think that that's just like another another layer of, of data almost, but it's like the, the place that we're moving from is neither monogamous or polyamorous. I guess from an outside perspective, it looks more monogamous now, but it, it changes all the time and the conversation's always open. And uh, actually, I mean, I'm always like well when does that stop and start like I, it's really hard to sort of transmit this across a conversation because I'm like you know a couple of months ago it didn't look that monogamous you know so it's like what's the spectrum of where we're measuring this from you know it's like this week <laughs> we probably look fairly monogamous you know but um yeah like over the summer and it was it was shifting and changing you know but it goes through it's almost like the cycles of monogamy or polyamory if we want to play in those labels are much bigger and wider so there's just longer periods of things looking like one or the other does that make sense yeah yeah it does it does it just feels like you you've explored these um 
these labels or these ways of doing things and then it's just like got it's all melted into each other and it doesn't it's yeah. all, it doesn't yeah. really matter yeah. anymore which I think is a is a beautiful place to be where you're just like not trying to fit yourself into certain boxes and can you explain a little bit more about what Eros is because for those that might, might be listening this might be a totally new conversation um sexuality might be like oh like so- something that we really spoke about growing up and with my friends this kind of level of conversation might be new. So can you explain what your perception of Eros is? Yeah, for sure. So I think Eros lives underneath our sexuality as of a shared. For me, it's like a, it's a pulse of life that's inside of the body. And the way that I see it is like people can move their sexuality without Eros. And I, when they, when they move it without Eros, it almost comes from this place of like adrenaline and um, perhaps a trauma bond, that kind of space. And it's, usually moving quite quickly and when people jump into bed together it's like there's no listening to the current it's just like okay well we know what to do now we do this this and this and we have sex you know it's like it's very you know by society's rules you could say versus eros i believe comes from it's like a pulse that's in in the earth you know and it rises up you you hear people talk about like the kundalini that moves through the spine like i believe that comes from the earth that 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 pulse, that vibration, that hum of life starts to move its way through our body. And then if we start to allow that to actually move through the sexuality, that's when it comes into a polarity. So like for me, Eros doesn't really have a polarity. It is, it is the void. It is non-dual. It's it's those those things that you speak to. And when it's it, when it comes through and it gets coated through the through the sexuality then it comes into a polarity and when it's seeking in that is actually more of itself so it's seeking more of that creativity it's seeking more of that um like life really it's seeking more life so then i notice like when i the way that you can track this in the world is like if you see uh sexuality moving from adrenaline usually it kind of ends like you it will come up it will find a partner you know you guys might have sex or you might have a business partner and have a creative project or something like that and it will blow up quite quickly because it's either like it's basically seeking to resolve the trauma. I almost see like a circle that's got like a, a gap in it, you know, like or a cell that's trying to come into closure. And it's trying to do that. But it's like because it's coming through the adrenaline, it can't actually do that. So then it's then it meets and it kind of blows up in the real world, either through like breaking down relationship or some form of drama but when you see this eros it starts to come up it comes up a little bit slower it's like there's more breath around it mm-hmm. and then when, <laughs> when you um have this experience of meeting another there's a sense of like oh something is alchemizing here something is you know like i'm changing as a human being and i'm growing and, and evolving because i'm i'm meeting in this level of polarity that's just life meeting life and I find that the projects that come from this place are a lot more sustainable. They last a lot longer. And they and like the relationships that are up well from this place, they seem to be a lot less ego driven. So they're not like seeking for status or, you know, something. They're not seeking anything in that way. They're just letting life become more life and then just watching and and being led by the eros itself you know and I think there's this weird bypass that I hear when people say like you know just let eros lead me you know <laughs> where it is actually just like a trauma bomb because it's like the place that they're listening to the eros from is different it's like eros is not a horny feeling in your body eros is like the pulse of life that your ego has to die to to actually hear that you know so there's a there's a definitely a big difference and that's actually why I was quite excited to come on this podcast because I feel like what you're speaking to is that place so true and it's a place that I'm learning to live from more and more and um and noticing as you explain one thing I love about this which I've I've never heard of before is understanding eros this energy this pulse of life and how it can um, move through and pertain to all of these facets of our life because I feel like from my very limited knowledge about your world um eros is like sexuality eros is intimacy with partner whereas you're saying eros is this is this energy underneath it all that can then be channeled into all of different creations in life whether that's a painting a business partnership a project yes a partner you know it's like it's like that behind the undercurrent that you're that you're speaking to and Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah it's so interesting as you're describing that I'm like wow I 
it's really interesting when I notice that I've come from that other adrenaline place and how things do just collapse or they do just kind of they do just end or blow up and how I feel like the more that I get to know myself the more that that undercurrent is, is teaching me how to actually live in a much in a much smoother much more grounded sustainable and it's like honey it's almost like a so it is the the void that you're you were describing yeah. earlier that place where it's like it actually feels really warm and and special and it's like take the breath and take it deeper and move in that way mm. and this and you know we were um speaking earlier in messages you're writing a book and looking at sex as art and mm. that obviously leads into the mystery and i and i feel like that's what you're speaking to so beautifully around when you're with a partner or in a project to to listen and to move with I guess is like the pulse and like the intuition like what is the current actually asking of you in that moment in that bed with that partner yeah like is it like for me I'm just like whoa is the actual rather than the mind going okay now we just do this and get it done is it like just a gentle touch on on the outer thigh (laughs) rather than like what's actually being asked in that moment and to follow that and how beautiful that feels. Is that kind of? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, you know, and I almost feel like with Eros, I don't even know if it's that even seeking pleasure. Like someone could listen to what you just said and be like, oh, you just follow where the pleasure is. And I was like, I don't, I'm not even sure if it's that sometimes, (laughs) you know, it's like, it's, it's, it is that and it can be that. And, and it's like, and it's also this place of like, I, I believe Eros is just trying to have us have a conversation through the body. So it's like the consciousness is so strong, like when we were in the mental space and how much like communication and connection gets lost through words. Mm. You know? And it's actually like this, the bodies have been speaking long before we've had language. And I think that there's like some sort of ancient wisdom that can actually open up when we are quiet enough to, and, I, I actually able to get uncomfortable enough to actually allow the the eros to speak through the body because sometimes there's this connotation for me that eros is like smooth you know like I've had a, a lot of experiences where I'm like my eros is being drawn over here and my ego fucking hates that <laughs> you know it's like this person's not attractive to me this person irritates me or whatever that is but I'm like no there's a deeper truth that I need to sit with this person and listen to what, what the bodies actually have to say and it doesn't have to be sexual and it doesn't have to be uh, pleasurable, but it's like in letting myself get uncomfortable and and be drawn to where my eros is being drawn, um, whatever needs to come through always comes through. Oh, wow. And that leads to the mystery, doesn't it? It's like you don't really know, but you're just following following it. Totally. Yeah. The void, the unknown, the just the trusting. Yeah. And so your relationship with the unknown, because I know you let go of a business that you built up in the last mm. year and yeah, look, I've seen you travel and make lots of shifts. And so where are you at right now with your relationship with the unknown and, and where you're sitting, you know, you've obviously got your new business, Yoni yeah. Elixir, but how are you feeling about these shifts and changes and what was that like to let go of the business that you poured so much into and built up to be so successful yeah. and so well known? Mm. What, yeah. what happened there? Horrible. <laughs> hated it <laughs> um it was uncomfortable and I feel like my relationship to um that part of the unknown and being like okay well I've just put like you know sort of like we can say eros or whatever took me into like working pretty freaking hard to grow this thing to build this thing um and listen to it in that way and and I was like, this is going to be like a 25 year project. You know, that was like my relationship to this. You know, it's like, there's no, this is so strong. This is a big energy, you know, like that's what it was feeling. And to feel it kind of like grow so big and then like almost feel like it was like not aligned with me anymore. Because that was a deeper truth. It's not that it wasn't aligned or it wasn't working and it still could be a 25 year project what it's been running, you know, five or six years now. And I think that there's something in, to be said around like the ego death of recognizing who's the custodian you know like I have sold it to two of the students one's in Canada one's in America and they're exactly who should be working with this right now and the relationship they have to to this school is exactly the kind of relationship that the world is seeking for what this is creating and it just feels so right now 
at the time it was really painful <laughs> and I really I didn't want to let go you know like I had this feeling of just like you know something I work on with my clients a lot now is like this idea of like people have this sort of relationship to the the mystery or eros if I follow the mystery and the eros then I'm just always going to be in alignment it's going to be amazing it's going to feel good it's like that is not what eros is actually that's not what the mystery is about you know the mystery it's like for me now it's like when the demise comes it's like can I actually follow the demise all the way down because I'm like anytime when I'm like pushing back against the demise I'm like if I'm watching something's dropping off um or I'm getting like a lot of lessons to say like this is like this doesn't want to happen I'm not trying to fight that anymore like that's probably one of the biggest lessons that I took away from letting go of the school because I was watching it like sort of like slip through my fingers and being like oh I don't I you know I was like throwing money left right and center trying to do keep it afloat and it just wasn't working and that was like the first time I did experience that because anytime when it had been like dropping off in other times it was like it was just calling for my attention in different areas And this was like, oh, no, this is not even wanting to happen in the same way anymore. And then when I was like, okay, well, what if it wanted to be sold? That's when it started to have flow again. And it looked like it was going that way now. And then letting go of that and then recognizing like my own path. And, you know, I'd like to maybe have children next year, that kind of thing. I'm like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense because I don't actually think I would do both those roles at the same time. So it felt like even what looked like a demise and looked like things were failing or something like that. It's like, that was actually just taking me to where I needed to go. And the e-commerce business feels so much more in alignment with what I'm doing now, you know, like and where I'm going and giving me the space to write this book that has wanted to find almost like the book ends when the school starts. So I'm like, Oh, well that kind of makes sense. Right. That I (laughs) created this thing. And so they can finish this book. It's all like, I think creativity is a really big thing that is connected to this void connection piece that you're speaking to as well. Like how does, where's creativity moving from? Where's relationship moving from all those pieces. Mm. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast. Cause I find it so fascinating, like the, the letting go, like the, the, the process of letting go. And I feel like life gets so much sweeter the more that we let things go that aren't for us and then it creates so much space and I have had so many conversations with people on this podcast around that process of just the next chapter and and something wanting to move on whether it's a career whether it's a relationship whether it's kids leaving the home to go to uni and and that place um friendships and and I even know for myself earlier this year business partnership ended really quickly like from the conversation to daydream daydream dream day that business from the conversation to it everything being ended like clients refunded instagram account closed down everything was two two just over two weeks oh my god it was so fast Mm -hmm. and so clean and and abrupt and shocking and at the same time it was so clear to me that it was time even though I wasn't the one to initially bring that conversation in, it was like, so it was so clear that that needed to end. Mm. And then from that point and for the last few months, like I've just had so much space to, to do things that I thought that I had to have millions of dollars to do, like have all this space to just go and chill on my family farm and mm. meditate and be with my, my dog, my dad's dog and see mm. my family who came over from the States, my uncle, and then go to Europe for, um three and a half weeks and even since and and going to on this holiday and not having any work on my mind and choosing to just fully be in the nothing Mm. which I've had so many family members particularly like my dad going are you going to get an income are you going to get a job and I'm just like just trusting I guess Mm. the undercurrent of what's actually for me Mm. which makes no sense like 35 not not working just letting it go and going on that holiday and not having any projects or anything it was the most beautiful holiday because I was actually present. I realized yeah. that so many holidays I've been on in the past, throughout all my twenties, I was always kind of freelancing or sometimes I'd go on holidays with two laptops mm-hmm. and it was just this totally different experience. And I just had the most wonderful time and it has cleaned up my headspace so much. And I feel like I have so much just lovely clarity right now. And I, I get, and at the same time, I don't even know what I'm doing, but there's just something else that I'm connected to that I know. Yeah. and it was from that business partnership ending so abruptly. It all was just over. This thing I thought we were doing for years. 
Mm. And it has been, I just know now time and time again, even when it feels so fucked and it's something's ending, it's always produced something so, so much cleaner on the other side. Yeah. It's always simplified. Totally. It was a very similar experience to me. Like um, I would have never been able to learn Serbian. So it's my partner's Serbian. And I really wanted to learn that language. And it was like, with how much bandwidth the school took up and started my reality, I would have never had the brain space to be able to take in a language, you know, and just having like six weeks to be over in Europe and like learning that language and then traveling and being in Bali. And, you know, there was so much I was doing over the over winter here, um, summer over there. Um, and even like I'm going back to Bali again, it's just like, there's so much space that is, um, yeah, like that space in the creative process is actually, I think what actually allows us to connect into that, that void like space. Cause mm. if we keep trying to create when we're full up, it's like, I don't know that we actually are getting the right projects. It's like, there's only a little bit of a window for the, for the true line alignment to come through. And I found that I actually have made, um, like I've done just as well financially since leaving my business this year because, but, and I've worked so much less. It's really weird. Like, and I, I've been like having that feeling of like, fuck, am I even going to, you know, what's going to happen? I don't know how I'm going to make a living, all that kind of stuff. And it just didn't show up like that because I didn't panic. I think, like you said, I didn't run it rush into panic. I think I just let the space um, be filled in the way that it wanted to be. Oh, yeah. Which is like, I, I feel like in doing that and we, I just feel like more and more people that I'm speaking to are being asked to step into so much spaciousness and realise how supported we are in that and how we don't have to physically do so much to live and to enjoy life. Yeah. Are you it's, a projector? No, manifester. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, well, same, same, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, and it's like and it's so interesting to think, my relationship with the void and clearly your relationship with the void and how full the void is in the most beautiful, more aligned way. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think I'm just sharing this because for anyone listening, who can feel that, that pull to, to let something go when it doesn't make any sense. And I know that this is such a flavor that I'm so passionate about on this podcast and just in my life of like, of trusting spaciousness and trusting stillness. Mm. And then when projects come from this place, from the void, from nothing, they are, they're, they're just so special. They're so magical. They're so aligned rather well, than the head trying to figure it out, trying to make it work, trying to line everything up, make it perfect. It just, it feels so hard and fucked <laughs> from that totally. place. And just a permission slip to start to play into a bit more spaciousness mm. that we can live from this, mm. live from that place. Yeah. The analogy that I see when you speak to that is literally like the waves in the ocean. It's like they, they keep coming and we don't actually have to like work them out. You know, it's like, and there's this space of just like when we're it's it's almost like we're forcing something when we try to think of something from the mind to create versus if you just like like let back and let that wave roll in it's like the current's already going that way you've just started riding it you know you just jumped on the surfboard to to get there it's just like whereas when you think about it from the mind it's like you have to create the ocean create the wave create the surfboard you know it's like well that is so much work you could just ride that wave to the shore <laughs> which is kind of how it felt like for me with a lot of the projects that I've had even the ones I've worked really hard at I feel like yeah this isn't like bypassing the hard work this is just like doing the work when it needs to be done versus trying to create something from nothing yeah and my girlfriend um staying at my girlfriend's house at the moment leans she's had a hip surgery and I've been nurse patty for the last few days and she's been high on pain medication and I'm I realize I'm at the same frequency that she's at when she's high <laughs> it's been the best <laughs> we've just been having the most in-depth conversation she's in la la land and I'm like I realize I actually kind of operate at this level on any given day um but we've been talking about that and about it's really interesting to just notice where we can be pushing and creating and it's not that like you were saying hard work's not required but when it's something that is actually for you like the wave that's actually coming through you for you for others for everyone it's like yeah you just you can turn up and do the discipline and do the thing it's just such a different energy to come from when the wave's coming through you and you're yeah. trusting it and it's moving you and you still get like action feels so fun. Like focus mm -hmm. feels so fun. Getting mm -hmm. shit done feels so fun rather than 
doing something, being in a job or on a project that's so clearly not for you and it's like rubbing you up the wrong way but you're still pushing through and then it feels hard. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, it feels so much better to move through and I'm I'm assuming that's what your book is feeling like at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I mean the book is like calling me to a much deeper discipline than I've experienced before and it's like, okay, this wants to come through now, you know. And it's just, and it's actually been a, a process of releasing a lot. There's about three books that are trying to come through, <laughs> and I've just been like, okay, can I di- can I be disciplined enough to listen to just this one current as it's coming through me? You know, it's like, and that's been really beautiful, actually. Like that's that feels like the process of the purpose of meditation. Because if we're all just the void, right? It's like, what is the purpose of meditation? It's like actually like the honing in and being able to listen to the to where the sort of the gravity is I I feel like in the void you know it's like because there's there's almost like multiple pockets of um like dark energy dark matter and it's like where is the dark matter like the most uh resonant you know and that's sort of what I've been sort of playing with recently yeah it's interesting I um I've got a few books that have been coming through too and one is a book of on nothing on like the the pillars or the flavors that I think are so so powerful in nothing and wow I haven't I haven't thought of that I should probably just be focused on one because I'm like so many books are coming through like I want to do a book lazy girl's guide to abundance like they're doing doing nothing to receive (laughs) and um but I'm like there's so many and they're saying the kind of the same thing but also yeah they're not so it's like to yeah to focus and to see it but I just want to bring it back a little bit to to sexuality and you were speaking before about just some things like for example, um, I guess, yeah, what I'd love to know from you is like, what are some things that you still see within sexuality for anyone who's listening that you still, people get caught up in and it's a bit of an illusion. And is there anything still that's still like present for you right now, Vic, where you're like, I still see this playing out for people. This is something I'd love to give you a new perspective on it within sexuality. Yeah, like all of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all distorted. Yeah, it's I just think all it's, an illusion. Yeah, I just think it's such a it's such a helpful topic. And um, you know what I find with you, I think initially when I when I when I first saw images of you online and everything, and like you're so beautiful and you're wearing um, velvet outfits and you with trees, I'm like, whoa, she's actually tapping into a level of sexuality that's so far from me. Like it feels scary, but um you don't like, I, I've you know, getting to know you and getting to know myself, it doesn't feel like that anymore. And I hope for anyone that's listening and the whole point of this podcast is I just want to soften topics mm-hmm. and, and it's not so scary and, and hopefully you can feel and hear Vic right now and just feel how like normal this is and how beautiful this is. But cause, cause sexuality can just feel so scary and so, so far mm-hmm. away and so strange and weird. So yeah. Sure. yeah, I will, I will share on some pieces. Like, I think that what we're speaking to around sexuality, like, and the way that sexuality is advertised to us, even from the people that are like me, you know, like the sex coaches and all this stuff is that there's a focus on pleasure. There's a focus on it should be pleasurable. You should be in pleasure. You know, like there's this like a lot of shooting and that's great, you know, like, because I feel like what that is a pushback against is all the times that women have been taught back to, to, lay back and think of England right it's like there's been a, this like there's been a a paradigm where women have been taught to give their bodies to men to be peacemakers basically so what this pleasure um you know paradigm that's been brought in has been a, it's been a, a contra like a evolution of that you know and it's beautiful that we're you know advocating for pleasure and what I would say even beyond that um if people are like well I'm not experiencing pleasure I think that the the place to go to is just like the place of eros you know like if you are if you have a beautiful loving partner and if you because it's what I'm seeing in this reality is like over boundaried women like well no this is not pleasurable for me so I'm not going to do that or whatever it's like yeah but that pleasure actually like you know I could have a connection with my um beloved and it'd be like not pleasurable because I'm not connected to myself you know, and then I could have a, you know, a a, a same connection on the same day, but I've already been with myself. I've been connected in my body and it's very pleasurable. And I think there's this um, place of like recognizing that all of this upwells from within, you know, and when we're stressed, 
there's not this place of uh, pleasure that's easy to access as much, you know. So there is like a, I guess my sort of takeaway for someone listening to this is like, can you let it be uncomfortable but not cross your boundaries? You know, it's just like, can you let yourself like find the the way through the discomfort, find your way to eros and find your way to that hum through awareness versus trying to make something happen? Like what if you leant back from the stimulation, leant back from the trying to have pleasure happen to discover where that that breath of life lives. Um, I feel like that's a big, a, a really useful piece with the breaking down of the illusions. Um, and there's also just like this idea around relationships as well. You know, like I've been doing a bit of um, spiritual entrepreneur matchmaking on, on the internet this week and it's been quite fun. And like some of the stuff and the conversations I'm having with people are so eye opening because I'm like, oh, this is, you know, like I live on a hill with my <laughs> beloved and I literally am just in my own bubble and I have absolutely no idea what's going on in the world sometimes. And it's been really like heartbreaking and also really eye opening for me to see the conversations that are really going on for people around dating, which is, you know, trying to find their king. Um, my ex is a narcissist, uh, mm. you know, what else is there? Um, you know, they like are, they are two big ones. Hey, I hear and see yeah. them a lot. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. Um, uh, yeah, the other one, what was it? Uh, like this twin flame conversation. Like, there's a documentary oh, yes. on the Netflix right now around like you know, twin flame universe or whatever. Um, and it's like this seeking of the soulmate, you know, outside of ourselves, or you know, and like labeling and needing to find meaning in things. And I feel like the void, if we're you know, the conversation is this of the void when you're working from that place of the dark, there isn't such a need to make meaning out of everything. So I feel like this piece that you're speaking to and just drawing people back to that quietness inside of themselves actually disperses a lot of that seeking for the king or, um, you know, uh, my ex is a narcissist conversations because uh, they're really stemming from the same place. You know, it's like this, something is outside of me and it's either attacking me or it's so far away and I can't obtain it, you know? It's like none of that exists when you're when you you become the oneness, you know, you become the void, you know, and you start to move from that place. So I feel like dispelling those two myths could be so interesting mm. for people. And, <laughs> and what are you saying to people in those conversations? Like what yeah, how do you respond when they are saying, I'm just looking for my king or like I'm here for my twin flame? I can feel them, I can feel my soulmate, I can feel all yeah. like yeah, my my ex is a narcissist. Like, what are what is your response to those com in those conversations? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm playing. I'm not really a dating coach, so I don't know if I want to even uh, like tell people what I think about this stuff. Sometimes, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I don't want to take that paradigm away from people because maybe it's relevant for them at this stage of the journey, and also like, so I'm not actually saying a lot to them because it's not really my. I don't feel like I'm giving them advice. Mm -hmm. But um, I do feel like there is an invitation into like when I set people up and when I do connect people, I'm asking them to lean into the 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 quietness and I'm asking them to lean into the potential of meeting in an authentic way. Like I ask them to like let go of these ideas of how they would meet somebody on a um, on an app, you know, like this is not an app. This is a matchmaking service, you know, it's like so for me, there's a big difference. It's like when you're being match made from my intuition, <laughs> you know, you're trusting my intuition. You're not trusting your view on whether someone's attractive or whether somebody is right for you from the look in their eyes or whatever. Like that's how you play on Tinder and this is how you play with me. So I'm really just inviting them into like a different way of approaching this conversation. Mm. And what would a practice be for someone if you like, I don't know if this is something that you would do when you were in the Institute or even with your clients now, like what are some something that someone could, who's listening right now could do at home, something simple to start to spend more time with themselves rather than keep seeking outside of themselves, whether that's to blame or that person's actually narcissist and a dickhead or that person is my soulmate and just that reaching or that pushing away. What's something they can do to start to feel more whole. Do you think mm. within themselves, whether it's a man or a um, woman? Yeah, I mean, the people that I'm setting up in the matchmaking thing where it's going really well, they're pretty freaking focused on their path, you know? I'm like, oh, there's there's a common denominator with, you know, and even like, okay, I'm living on my hill. I don't, I don't, have, I don't have relationship drama. I don't have, um, you know, like I'm not in a dynamic, you know? Like this is what I'm seeing. Like the people that are like, I've tried to set up a few people and they're like, 
oh um you know I had a fight with that person or they were my housemate and that went really badly you know like there's all this other stuff going on I'm like these are the things that are blocking people from um finding peace you know and finding part like their partnership is like the peace inside of themselves the people that I find are pretty focused on their purpose have are aligned with the projects that they're working on are finding that deeper truth of like this is where I should be putting my energy so if like if a drama comes into life how much can they come into the quietness versus engaging in it dynamicking it working it through with that with these all these people and these dynamics and going okay I'm actually making a commitment to this project and and these relationships are not even like partnership relationships but like you said family um you know people in my community how can I be of service like all of that is the pathway to partnership in my opinion because I watch enough people now create partnership from just like the ones that I started connecting before I put this on the internet I was like these people weren't even seeking relationships you know I was like you should go with you you know <laughs> like and that and because they were so focused it's like was that like, like you know head down bum up you know just doing the thing that they came here to do it's like people will start to it, it vibrates them in the resonance of alignment and that is and if you're vibrating in the resonance of alignment your person's going to find you you know it's like you don't actually need to seek or put labels on narcissists or soulmates or twin flames when you're just doing that like I don't think I've ever used that language in my own relationship <laughs> mm. and I've never put any of my exes narcissists that I think from what I can remember Mm. yeah it's something that I'm saying to realize the more and more I just spend time in the void in nothing within myself particularly in meditation like I just spend so much time there and I feel for me like the way that I've I've kind of make sense of it is I'm spending so much time with what I really am yeah which is nothing and in that there's so much harmony and coherence and so everything and this is what I I love saying I'm like guys go into the void because when you spend time there you're spending time with what you really are and it's this one area of your life that you're putting wanting to upgrade like it's not quite working go in there and then everything upgrades because you're not separate from anything it's it's yeah. similar to what you're saying right now it's like just keep doing the things that you actually came here to do and you'll be in alignment and because there's no separation there's oneness everything that you want will just start to pop in because you're not set like, yeah, you want a relationship, but if you just do the project that you're being called to do, the relationship will come in, whether that's a great friendship or even just a, a better relationship with your dad or whatever it is, like everything comes into alignment because you're not separate from anything rather than focusing on trying to fix one thing. Like you were saying at that, that housemate or thinking that you need to dig through all the rubble with that person and go through all those conversations that no, just stay in alignment and, the alignment comes in all facets of life because you're not separate from anything. You don't need to necessarily fix one thing, mm -hmm. like yeah. focus on it. Yeah. And like I, when I um, came into resonance with the relationship that I'm in right now, there wasn't any pushing or dating lots of people or like, this is what I'm calling in. I'm going to make this happen. It was just like, Oh, this is, this is just resonant. Oh, it looks like this is becoming a relationship. Neither of us were looking for relationship, neither of us were looking for marriage or children or any of those things. It was just like, okay, the relationship's now asking for those things. Can we listen to that? Can we honor the union and where the union is taking us? You know, it's like, it's all very much like um, letting go of what the eye thinks that it wants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just trusting, it's again, coming back to the point you were speaking about earlier of well, what I'm hearing and I, I don't know much about eros like the concept of it and i have probably have my own connection with it just naturally but um but yeah just trusting the current mm -hmm. like trusting the trusting what the, that step is like where you can feel the pull like can you just go there what can feel like the unknown it might be unfamiliar the mystery and just mm -hmm. go there and that's again like i guess you and i chatting about us both letting go of businesses and or it, it just happening like it, it almost was just falling through my hands and you were kind of saying that about your yeah. business too you're like I can't even hold on to this if I tried it's literally going yeah. and I think the more that we get in connection with ourselves the more that we realize we're not separate from life and that those things just happen like it's it's actually us doing it anyway like we're letting that thing go the greater part of us that is nothing that we can't see yeah is letting it go anyway it's not actually happening to us it's it's actually us doing it in some way shape or form completely 
Yeah. And so what advice would you give to anyone now who's who's just tapping more into themselves and and discovering their sexuality and in this conversation, just going, okay, things don't feel in alignment. Like what else could they do with themselves? Yeah. So I have a um, sex magic meditation on Spotify, which I think is actually pretty good for connection to this place. And I think a lot of people feel that manifestation or sex magic is like using your will to will things into reality. And actually what I feel like it is, is, just like letting go it's almost like the opposite it's like if it will is engaging your mental focus into something to make something happen sex magic is the opposite it's like how much can you let go of the will and let go of the thing that you want to find that deeper truth and alignment because when you have an orgasm you aren't thinking about anything you're not like you're not focusing on something even when people say I'm channeling my my thoughts into into where I want to go I'm like I don't know if that's really true like I just feel like it's if you're really letting your orgasm expand to you to your greatest potential it's like you're not thinking you're you're not trying to hold on to anything as you're going into that orgasmic state you're just surrendering to the current that's moving through your body and it gets stronger the more you don't focus it onto whatever you think you need to focus it onto again the letting go (laughs) it's everywhere (laughs) into the void it's like it's all there for you but it makes no (laughs) logical sense and it's definitely not something that we were just or that I was taught growing up Mm. around this concept it was that very much like go for it the mind and so this invitation into the void is yeah can feel really unnatural and really fucking uncomfortable like you were saying earlier Vic of just like how uncomfortable this Mm. process is and yeah I know for me sitting in meditation like so my, my guidance at the moment is to sit in so much meditation and over the past year and a half it has been like 90 percent just uncomfortable just mm-hmm. all the resistance just total shake just total not wanting to do it and making myself do it mm-hmm. and and in that so much peace is now coming but I've sat in so much discomfort to yeah. access the void which yeah for me I knew was there like I just know yeah but also such such a journey so I've actually listened to your um sex magic on Spotify it's it's so good and I'll link that below for sure thank you so much for coming on to on into the nothing Vic I really appreciate your time and your voidiness you're so voidy (laughs) appreciate it too it's nice to chat to you yeah thank you and thanks to everyone who's been listening I so appreciate you thanks for subscribing thanks for liking check out Vic's details they're all down below Um, her beautiful business Yoni Elixir and just anything else she has on offer her details will be below to get into her world I'm sure you'll just sink and melt into her her void for sure it's um very magnetic thank you thank you bye